Hello everyone, my name is Deckerlink the Trained Unprofessional, that's Spoof playing with one of his toys in the background, and welcome back to Tennis Ace. <laughs> Jesus Christ, on the last episode, we made our choice of what to eat, and, uh... Turns out, the creator sent me a message, the person behind this game, and, uh... That choice had nothing to do with choosing your character. We built it up and built it up, and it had nothing at all to do with the final choice of route. Uh, so, that really made me feel like I've spent my time and effort on something useful. So, let's get back into it. We had just chosen what we were going to eat. Now we shall continue. There, that didn't take long. See? Copying other people doesn't count, though. There's just no winning with you, is there? Sorry, I already know all your buttons. I'll always win. Say it, John, if you please. Of course. Saya bows to us one more time. Ah, and before I forget, show e chi. If you ever pull this sort of stunt again, I'll let everyone know about your little secret. Am I clear, little bastard? Ooh, a little secret, huh? A little Shoichi's got a little secret, does he? Well, I wanna know what that fucking secret is. I'm adjusting the microphone in the middle of a recording because I'm awesome. The aura of violence around her is so strong that I start to feel cornered just by being nearby her. Shoichi immediately shrinks back in his seat, sh quaking in fear. Uh, okay, please just wait for a little bit. Also, I wanted to address that one more time. I am taking pills for my burping. It is not me just being rude. It's me having a stomach disease. We're having trouble diagnosing it, so treating it has only been sort of patchwork at this point. I took my pill. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I personally think it has something to do with the fact that the water around here tastes like bleach, but we'll see about that. So, I'm not going to apologize for my belching, and if it happens to make its way into a video that I don't manage to edit out, sometimes I do, sometimes I can't, then fucking deal with it. I can't help it. I have a disease. I'm not going to apologize for being sick. Got it? Fuck. Okay, please just wait for a little bit. Shoichi is still quaking in terror after Saya leaves. I could feel myself losing a few years of my life. What's the secret she's talking about, though? D nothing. It's nothing at all. Oh, I don't know from the look on his face. <laughs> I'd say it's probably something monumental. J shut up! Why you denying it so vehemently only makes us want to know it even more. That's not my problem. Then you won't mind if we sniff around to find out what you've been hiding, do you? What? Oh, well, I bet he has a goofer that he's hiding. Maybe Shuichi-san is dating a beautiful college-age big sister type and don't, doesn't want anyone to find out. Wait a sec. I see Shuichi, you sly dog. Would you all just shut up? <laughs> see? Not fun when you're the only one being made fun of all the time, right? Uh, shut up already. I'm sorry, okay? I think the one you should be apologizing to is Ms. Mizuguchi-san. She didn't seem at all happy to see us here. Yeah, if Saya went through the trouble of hiding this from us for this long, then she surely didn't want you bringing everyone here. Alright, alright, I'll apologize once her shift is over. Do you think she'd tell us about the secret he's hiding? <laughs> Don't you dare! Shuichi, everyone's looking at us. Ah. Uh... This is what happens when you shout. Now all the surrounding tables are glaring daggers at us again. Uh, I'm sorry to disturb you. <laughs> he manages to stutter an apology, his face completely red. We might just give him an aneurysm if we keep this up. I say we go for it. Shut up. <laughs> it actually sounds like it might be fun. Not you two! Shuichi, control your voice. He freezes again, looking around to see if any tables are looking our way again. Once he ascertains that they're not, he relaxes. What are you guys doing to me? Think of it as divine punishment. If it were divine, it wouldn't be coming from you three devils. Oh, shit. Three? Am I a devil too? Don't play coy, you joined them in teasing me. I did? What? June, you need to be a little more self-aware. June blinks in confusion. 
you don't need to keep whispering, you know? I don't want to risk it! <laughs> Little doggy here is too much of a good boy to disturb the other patrons. What'd you say, you bastard? <laughs> there, I fixed him. It's not often that Shimichi gets toyed around like this. And Keikun just hit a nerve right now. Maybe. Should we pile it on or just stop tormenting him? I don't know. It seems everyone is saying to stop tormenting him. We don't want to overdo it, so... Uh, let's... Let's... Let's stop. Alright, enough already. While it would truly be deserved for him to suffer teasing and humiliation on par with what he caused Saya, I just don't have the heart to do that to him. Ah, oh, Gekun, stop that. A restaurant isn't the sort of place to do this kind of stuff. You're bailing him out already? Come on, at least let me mess with him a little. If we were in private, I might have, but I just don't want to cause a scene in public. Just leave him alone for now, okay? And yet it's fine when he does it. Yeah, I could see how that would be a little shitty. It's true that this is a double standard. Sorry, Keikun, I'll try to keep an eye to avoid situations like this happening to you in the future, too. Thanks, Rutherford. I didn't do it for you, I did it for the other patrons. Shoji chuckles, the soft voice carrying through the air like music. Still, thanks. I shrug. Alright, it's ready! Be careful, it's piping hot! She swiftly sets our plates on the table. Shall I bring you anything to drink? Oh, that's interesting. Usually, in America, we get the drinks first. <laughs> I'm surprised at how fitting this mild-mannered attitude is to her. How should I put it? I guess if I were to forget her true character, I could actually be fooled by this act. And yeah, it doesn't seem out of place at all when I think of it like that. I hope to see you again soon, masters. That's so fucking weird. As we're leaving, Saya waves at us with a smile on her face. I swear, if any of you would come here again, though it doesn't, though it does a little to hide her malicious aura. Ugh, Jesus. Well, we're back here again. Ah, the music. It's lovely. We go back to the main street in front of the station. It seems like we hit rush hours. Many people are keep pouring out of the station. The streets that until now only had a couple passers-by here and there are now packed with endless waves of people. Uh, dude starts fidgeting uncomfortably, walking closer to me than before. His hand keeps brushing up against my arm multiple times. Are you alright, Kobayashi-san? You seem a bit on edge. Keikun seems a bit more mindful of June than you'd normally expect him to be. He's shooting curious glances at the tiger every few seconds. Uh, that's right, I forgot that Jun-kun doesn't deal well with crowds. What? Seriously? Oh crap, I think I remember him saying something about it when we first met. We should probably find a quieter place we can relax. Hmm. Shoji starts looking around. This is one of the, those situations where his crazy height make him use, makes him useful, since he can easily see over the mass of people. Ah, oh, there's a sweet shop over there that is almost empty. We can go there for a while. Are you sure you're not just saying that because you want to eat some sweets? <laughs> Nothing wrong with mixing business with a little bit of pleasure. Oh god, that sounded so incredibly wrong. <laughs> well, good to see at least they're enjoying themselves. I really like the art on Kun. He's just he's so cute. Uh, oh my god, he's crying. Meanwhile, June has grabbed a hold of my arm and is now squeezing it tightly. Dude, I fucking, I fucking sympathize with this shit. I am not good in crowds either. What's this crazy strong grip? Crack, crap, I think he's getting flood load on my arm. What if you do, do it fast before this living tourniquet makes me lose my arm. Shoichi chuckles, grabbing hold of June's shirt collar and dragging him towards the store. And in the process, I get dragged along with him since June refuses to let go of my arm. Oh, Jesus. It really... It, it, panic attack's are no fucking joke, dude. I'm... Oh, I feel bad for the little tag over there. By the time we manage to squeeze our way through the crowds of people and into the shop, both June and I are almost seeing stars. June-kun, June-kun, it's okay, you can open your eyes now. Huh? June finally snaps out of it, looking around in confusion. 
Where are we? Shuichi took us to a nearby store. Now, would you please let go of my... I can't feel my arm! Ah! He finally releases... Notices the fact that he still has a death grip around my arm and releases it. I can feel it. I can feel my arm again. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. S sorry, I'm not good with crowds. No kidding. Jun rubs his cheeks in embarrassment. Come on, none of that matters now. And since we're here in this beautiful store anyway... Shuichi starts rubbing his hands, looking like one of those stereotypical scheming villains that you would see in really bad action flicks. <laughs> Ooh, apparently uh, Alvaro Osorio has warned us that a cute moment is ca incoming. Excuse me, can I have three green tea flavored rice cakes? Thank you. He hands a bill to the clerk and takes a small paper bag with the sweets. Ah, June whimpers as he sees Shuichi start eating. Shuichi notices it immediately. Did you want some? Uh, no, no, I, I don't want to impose. It's no imposition. Here, take one. Shuichi walks up to June, handing one cake over with a big smile on his face. Well, if you're really offering, then I guess. He tries to nonchalantly play it off as if it weren't a big deal, even though his face easily gives it away. Mm, so good. Ujihara, would you like one too? I'll pass. I can't stand Japanese sweets. Odd thing to say when you are Japanese. Maybe I don't, I don't fucking know. Kekun stares at the little rice cake with a measure of disgust that I didn't think was possible for him. Plus, if you only have one left, then shouldn't you be offering it to Rutherford's on first? As if he hates green tea with a passion. It's true, I really do. I nod to emphasize my point, looking down at the green tea treat with disgust equal to case case. Shoichi finishes eating both of his sweets and puts the bag in the trash, dusting his hands as he does so. Well, then I guess we should be going. Uh, can we stay here just a little longer? Jun asks, half pleading. Shoichi looks to at least be considering it. Well, if it's Shoichi we're talking about, then his next move will probably be... There's a karaoke just around the corner. How about we go there? Just uh, suggesting something nearby, just so we can please June. Yep, just as easy to road read as always. Just as easy to road. Hey, no. I'm not dead. Aren't karaoke places kind of expensive? It's fine. It's the four. If the four of us pitch in, we can get a room for a couple hours, dirt cheap. Oh, I'm surprised you know about that. You go to karaoke often. Every now and then. With a voice like that, of course you would. Ah, then I'm looking forward to seeing you sing, Urishihara-san. You got <laughs> No, I, I don't sing in public. Don't say that. What we're going where? Where? What are you going to be doing if you're not going to take part? I'm gonna make fun of how bad you are, isn't that obvious? You trying to pick a fight? <laughs> I like how the faces match up both uh, in the dialogue box and up there. Like, that's a good, that's a good touch. That's a good touch right here. It's a good fucking touch. Okay, let's not cause another thing in public, shall we? They seem to have compiled for the time being. Or complied, I should say. I was like, what the fuck do you mean compiled? They've complied for the time being, even though they continue glaring at one another. It creep. It's like, it's like walking around with a bunch of fifth graders. It's a classic karaoke bar. Mm. Wow, this place is so pretty, and it even has air conditioning in 2018. Oh my god! <laughs> June runs up to the air conditioning machine and shoves his face in front of the main fan. Not gonna lie, I like the smell of air conditioning, so I feel you there. So cool! The rapidly spinning fan distorts his voice. Wow, that actually kinda, I don't know, making it sound distorted and robotic. The three of us watch in astonishment as his childish delight, uh, as his childish delight over common objects comes out in full force. Is this the karaoke machine? He touches a black box that is standing below a giant plasma screen, and it immediately lights up. Ah, did I break it? Oh, the, oh, this one is ha, has touch buttons. The place I usually go to doesn't have them. What have them yet? T touch button. What? It seems like the English has stumped him quite a bit. 
what? Okay, this is the weird part about playing this game in English. Is that when they do a English isn't working quite thing, and ah, oh, fucking no. Touch button. That means instead of having to actually press down on it, I know what a touch button is, you fuck. Whoa, so high tech. Well, it's true that his enthusiasm puts us all in a better mood. Not really, it's pretty average. Most DVD and Blu-ray players nowadays use those. It's pretty new for karaoke machines, though, especially commercial ones. After all, due to the heavy workload, they have to make sure they're durable so they can't just so they can't just cram in new features. True. Kaken sits down at the seat closest to the air conditioning machine. Of course he does with his long sleeve shirt. Fuck. <laughs> Picking up the portable tablet screen that shows the music list. So, who's going to... Me, me, me! Let me go first! <laughs> Jesus, Jun nearly crawls over to, over Keiku and pressing his face so close to his that they almost touch. <gasps> Keiku jumps back in his seat, completely taken aback. Alright, alright, take it! Here's the controller! Keiku hands him the device. How do I use this? <laughs> June taps the pen on a bunch of different places on the screen, making the TV flash a bunch of random lists. Duh, give it to give this to me. Unable to watch it anymore, Kay Coon snatches the controller from his hand and puts it back on the song selection screen. Just choose a song and I'll play it for you. Okay. Yay! June singing is full of passion and excitement. It's more than clear that he's not focused on singing perfectly, and is instead just trying to have fun. Even though his voice is nothing to write home about, thanks, his natural charisma <laughs> makes you want to enjoy watching him. From the corner of my eye, I see Keikun tapping his hand on his legs to do the rhythm, silently watching as well. Shoichi is merrily humming alongside the music. It seems he also likes this song quite a bit. It's a nice atmosphere. Eventually, June's song ends. He sits down, huffing and puffing. Ah, uh, that was so more draining than I thought. But did but did you have fun? Yeah! Then that's all that matters. Look, the machine is giving you a score now. They give out scores? The newer ones do. The machine reads, calculating your score, please wait for a few seconds. June shifts closer to the screen, waiting impatiently for it. And then the screen blinks, your score is 71. Congratulations, is what it says. Just 71? Boo! Let me try that again. Let other people have their turn. I'm sure he didn't mean to, but Kay Kun's voice just now was a bit more stern than necessary, not to mention his eyes. Sorry. He immediately noticed how it affected June, though, making sure to apologize promptly. He leans back in his seat, uncomfortable. W well, it seems Shoichi is at a loss. What was that about? Udishihara, could it be that you want to sing? D no. I see. <laughs> I see what's going to happen even before it happens. Okay, then, you sing. Uh, uh, me? No way! Then how about a competition? <laughs> Of course, everything's got to be a friggin' competition between these two. Keikun's ears immediately turn towards Soichi. Slowly, he turns his head in that in his direction. You think you want to challenge me? <laughs> oh shit! Oh, oh, okay. What do you have in mind? I don't know if I should congratulate Soichi for manipulating Keikun that easily. We each sing a song. Then we'll ha then we'll have these two decide who is the best singer. The loser has to buy lunch for the winner. That's all. It's a pretty boring winning prize. Not all of us are rich, you know. So you're saying you're afraid of losing? <laughs> What's the face? It's scary. I'm saying it's a possibility. It's a possibility. Keikun's eyes narrow as he considers the idea. He silently muses over it for a few seconds before. Don't regret it when you lose. Oh, shit. Shuichi smiles again. Keikun stands in place, gripping the microphone tightly with one hand and placing the other on his pocket. Somehow he looks far more imposing with that mic in his hands. The song starts playing. It's a rock song that does not match at all with the image of Keisuke that I have in my head. I thought he would pick something more classical sounding. 
As the air starts getting more and more tense, I see the screen indicating that the vocals should begin in a few seconds. Instinctively, I hold my breath. Keisuke's voice echoes through the room, crashing against us like countless waves. From seemingly nowhere, his voice starts to scream out a song, spilling it out with so much power. Didn't Netflix do a show about this? It's like the air in front of us exploded. Unable to react, I just stand there in a daze. When I look to the side, I see Shoichi and Jun gaping at him, both as surprised as I am. Geikun continues to sing with so much confidence, as if this part, as this sort of thing was natural for him. The song shifts into chorus, his voice goes even higher. I'm surprised he can even make the sounds with his voice. He's always so inexpressive when we're talking. Before I notice it, the song is ended. Geikun places the microphone back on the table and sits down on the couch, not bothering to look for his score. Out of curiosity, I peer at the screen. Your score is 100! Congratulations, you've achieved a max score! Are you for real? <laughs> I don't even know what to say! What even is there to say? But, wow. Shuichi 2 looks completely flabbergasted. He keeps staring at the score screen, not taking his eyes off the big golden 100 written on it. Keisuke-san, that was amazing! I'm both caught by surprise when Jun almost screams that line out, making us jump out of our seats. Keisuke doesn't look too surprised. In fact, he's been spacing out in his seat until Jun called him. Why didn't you tell us you were such a great singer? Please do one more! Encore! Encore! He looks slightly annoyed by Jun's attitude, resorting to a sigh to show his displeasure. Which, of course, flies by Jun's head. You should totally be a singer! I'm not interested in music, he says somewhat harshly. But that's such a waste! The only thing I want to do is play tennis. Everything else is nothing but a distraction. You know, he said with such conviction, his eyes were looking away. But... All right, I guess it's my turn now, right? Jun seemed to seem like he wanted to say more, but Shuichi was quick to interject. Probably for his best, too, otherwise the mood might have turned irredeemably sour. Let's see, what should I pick, then? Hmm... Hi, I only got 79 this time, too! Boo! Jun was pouting and throwing a fit as he got another score below the 80s. Shoichi was too busy laughing at him to care. He nearly knocked down the controller when he th tra thrashed around in his laughing fit. Gee, shuttle down, will ya? Keikun stared at them with an amazed expression. I myself am surprised at how lively these two can be. They really get along surprisingly well. But... But I didn't get manage to get a score over 80 a single time, and everyone else got a bunch. Come on, you shouldn't rely on a machine to give you a singing a score. It's not going to be accurate. Really? Because Keisuke-san got three perfect scores in a row. Keiki looks away, seemingly uncomfortable. Not much is true, though it took quite a bit of convincing after the, he went in the first time. We managed to get him to sing a couple more times. Imagine our surprise when both of them were pitch perfect and got solid 100 scores. Afterwards, he was too embarrassed by the attention given to him by June and refused to sing further. You just need to practice more. You sounded good. He deflects, trying to take the attention away from himself. Oh, that was, that's cute too. Boo! Still, June remained sour for a bit of time. The sound of knocking echoes from the door. Excuse me, you're two hours in the over in three minutes. Would you like an extension? Has it been that long already? Man, time sure flew today. I'm sorry, I can't stay any longer. I need to be back to the estate by 4 p.m. anyway. You live in an estate? Got a problem with that. The only problem I have is your attitude. No, not at all. Just surprised me. Well, that's fine. There's a hint of red I see in these cheeks. Hmm? I should probably get going as well. There are some matters I need to look into at the student council before I head home. Shoichi-san, you always seem to be doing a lot for the council. Is it that fun to work with them? F fun? The questions seem to catch him by surprise. His face scrunches up for a few seconds before he can recompose himself. I suppose it is. What do they have you doing this time? Well, they took a few matters out of my hands in the last couple of days, said I needed some time for myself lately. 
But I still have to check with City Hall about a campaign we're doing to protect the woods close to campus. Oh, right. I remember that was a big part of your election pitch. Yeah, and arranging for more scholarships for areas outside of sports. Junkin was actually the first student to be given a scholarship using the program I proposed. What? Seriously? Does that mean you're the reason I managed to join the school? <laughs> nah, you have your own merits to thank for that. All I did was set things in motion. That little... I had no idea his project had been accepted already. He's been planning this since he first joined our high school two years ago. I can't believe he didn't tell me something like that. Well, there's still lots of things that need to be discussed. While I managed to get approval for music scholarships, I haven't gotten their approval for things like debate that are more theoretical. Really, I think I won't be able to see the fruits of my labor while I'm still studying here. Don't worry, I'll make sure to keep things going for you. You say that as if you're getting elected next year or it was already a done deal. Kaikun merely smiles in response. Anyway, we should get going soon. Our three minutes should be close to being over, and I'm afraid they might charge us another hour if we go over a lot of time. Why, wow, you're right! All I have to do is talk about being charged more money to make June panic. Uh, so easy to read. Bye bye! June waves at the two of them as their backs became further, farther, and farther away. Uh. We still have quite a bit of daylight for ourselves. I wonder what I should do now. Well, we will find out what we are going to do in the next episode. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I have been the Train Nun Professional, speaking with the voices of my head when I say, fare thee well. Bye, everyone! <laughs>